The other week, Bungie dropped one of the largest TWABs I think I've ever seen. There are a ton of massive changes in this TWAB that are detailed with things like new weapon stats, changes to how resilience works, special ammo scavengers going away in PvP, and we are getting entirely new mechanics to improve primary gunplay. It's massive, and if you're a hardcore Destiny player, I highly recommend you go and comb over that TWAB so that you really understand all of these changes. But in today's video, I wanna go over three of the biggest changes or takeaways from that TWAB and how they're gonna impact you as a player moving forward into season 17. We're gonna go over those changes and then we're gonna talk about what you can do now to sort of prepare for that meta shift that's gonna be coming in the next season. But real quick, gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers an easy and affordable way to get delicious meals delivered right to your door. They have so many choices to choose from on their website, and there's new options being added every week so you can always try new recipes and foods. With so many different options, there's always something to fit your specific diet or tastes. You can add, swap, or upgrade your protein with any meal to try out new combinations. If you're like me, it can be hard to find the time to organize and try new recipes, and you end up getting stuck in that same cycle of boring meals over and over again. I love having healthy meals as often as I can, but between work, gaming, and day-to-day -day life, it's easy to take shortcuts on cheap, unhealthy fast food. Thanks to HelloFresh, I don't have to do that anymore. HelloFresh meals are easy to prepare and they all come with pre-portioned ingredients and step-by-step -step instructions that take all of the busy work out of cooking. Just pick what you like, and you'll actually end up having fun trying out all these new foods and recipes when it's this easy. You can use my code POGGRAYMAY16 or follow my link in the description to get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts plus free shipping across six HelloFresh boxes. Thank you again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video, and I hope you enjoy the meals you pick out as much as I did. Now, when I say meta shift, understand I'm talking about more than just guns. I'm talking about the way we build our characters is gonna be different in the coming season. And the first point I wanna make on that is how Bungie is changing weapon flinch. Now, whenever you receive incoming damage, your reticle tends to get moved off of a target. This is known as flinch, and it can be really annoying. It can move you off your target, can make gunfights really difficult, especially if you're using a precision weapon like a sniper rifle or a hand cannon. Now, all we really have in the game right now to combat this are the unflinching mods that you can put on your chest. This will help you negate some of that incoming flinch when you receive weapon fire, but that's all we can really do right now to help combat that. That's going to change massively in Season 17. Bungie is adding a few new ways for us to sort of build craft into combating weapon flinch in Destiny 2 PvP. The first change on the list is that Bungie is now changing the resilience stat to grant flinch resistance the further you spec into it. It's not a ton, but they say at zero resilience, it's gonna be a 0% modifier. If you spec all the way up to 100 resilience, it's gonna give you a 10% reduced flinch on all of your primary weapons. That's gonna be really important. Whether or not that makes it so you want to run 100 resilience, that's entirely up to you. But myself, I am sort of specking more towards that. The best way to go about this is using a website called d2armorpicker.com. This website is incredible. You log into your Bungie account, it'll sort of scan all of your armor on your character, and you can select what stats you're going after. So if you want to keep using the same exotics you're used to, you can do that. You can select that. You can say, hey, I want to go after eight resilience and it'll show you what armor pieces you can use to hit that target. It's a really good way to min-max your builds and your stats. I highly recommend using it because I went over and I was able to rework my main Warlock build into a much higher resilience stat. You can see I'm actually running 81 resilience on my Warlock now, and I'm actually gonna try and push this a little bit further because I really wanna see how much of an impact it will make if I can get to 100 resilience. Now, a lot of people are saying this is very beneficial for Titans, and it is. Resilience does reduce the cooldown of their barricade, and now it's gonna give them flinch resistance as well. So that's gonna be a nice benefit for Titans out there. But Warlocks have a very similar thing. We get to build into recovery, and that also reduces our rift cooldown. So it's sort of just one of those things we kind of got to roll with. But Resilience is gonna be a much more important stat moving forward in Season 17. So I'd highly recommend taking a look at your gear seeing if you can get yourself to at least 
six resilience is what I would recommend. You might push that further if you really want to spec into reducing weapon flinch. But that's not all they're doing. On top of that, Bungie said they're also reworking the stability stat on all of our weapons to make it so stability is also going to negate weapon flinch, which is incredible. This is going to change the way we look at a lot of the weapons that we're currently using. And a perfect example is the IS Luna hand cannon. Now, this is a very meta hand cannon that a ton of people love, and it's because it's a bit of a stat monster. You can really build it several different ways, depending on what you prefer. If you're on M and K or controller, you can really go after different stat priorities on this gun. And now you might want to look at this and think, hey, maybe I want some more stability instead of just going for max range because it's going to help you combat flinch even more now. IS Luna has some incredible rolls available on it and you can get an insanely high stability on this. You can get above 80 stability on this hand cannon and if you pair that with a rangefinder, you're still gonna have good range. You'll still have about 33 to 34 meters of range. So you can really go hard with specking into stability and if you're running high stability weapons with 10 resilience, you're gonna have almost no weapon flinch because these things stack multiplicatively. They did say that in the TWAB as well. So these will multiply together to give you your final flinch resistance number. And you're still gonna have the armor mods on your chest as well. So you can really build into this really hard. That's gonna be even more important because one of the next big changes that Bungie made is the fact that they are now disabling scavenger mods inside of the Crucible. So special ammo weapon scavengers are no longer going to function at all inside of the crucible no more shotgun scab no more fusion scab no more sniper rifle scab you will spawn with two bullets if you get a kill and they drop a brick pick it up you get one bullet back that's it special weapons are going to be starved for ammunition next season which is going to make it even more important to spec into making your primary weapon feel as good as possible so those are things to keep in mind while you're out farming right now. If you're running dungeons and you're chasing armor rolls, keep in mind if you're a big PvP player, you're definitely going to want to spec more into resilience and stability on all of your primary weapons because it's going to help you out a ton next season. Now the final change I want to talk about, number three, is the fact that they're adding yet another weapon stat to every weapon in the game and this changes things a ton. And I know this is treacherous territory. It's very controversial. The community was really in an uproar about some of these changes, especially to Stompies. We're gonna talk about it a little bit here. But Bungie is adding a new stat to our weapons known as Air Effectiveness. This is gonna be sort of a hidden stat. Just like Recoil Direction and Aim Assist, you will have to look at this at a third-party app. But this is going to be added to every weapon in the game and every weapon moving forward. This stat now I have to phrase this very carefully. This stat determines the amount of aim assist you get while you're in the air. Very important to understand that aim assist and accuracy are two different things. Aim assist while in the air will be determined by your air effectiveness stat in season 17. Now I think this is an amazing change because not only are our legendary weapons getting this stat, but all of our exotic weapons are getting this stat as well. So things like Thorn, Ace of Spades, Sturm, some of those exotic primary weapons that we all love to use, they've never been great in the air because you can't have Icarus Grip. Now they're gonna have that air effectiveness stat making them perform better in the air, which I'm really looking forward to. Now Bungie takes this really far because it's gonna be another stat that we can build into to increase our air effectiveness with all of our weapons, similar to how we can build into reducing flinch on our weapons as well. They do say every weapon is gonna have that air effectiveness stat. Depending on where that weapon comes from, it's gonna have sort of higher tiers of that stat. So something like an Adept Palindrome that drops from Grandmaster Nightfalls, that's gonna have a very high air effectiveness stat. So if you're already using that weapon, you're probably not even gonna notice the changes here because you can still use Icarus Grip, Adept Icarus Grip, and that's gonna give you air effectiveness as well. You'll be able to stack that on top of the weapon's innate air effectiveness stat. Now on top of all of this, Bungie is making it so most of our exotic armor will also give you a benefit to your air effectiveness as well. Now you can go and see this list in the TWAB itself, but something I wanna point out for my Warlock mains here is that the Ophidian Aspect Exotic is probably going to be 
the most meta exotic in the game for Warlocks next season because the Ophidian aspect is going to give you plus 10 air effectiveness to all of your weapons on top of those instant reload and handling speeds. It's going to be an absolutely amazing, well-rounded exotic everywhere in the Crucible. You cannot go wrong by using Ophidian aspects next season, and that's sort of the build I've put together here, running high resilience with Ophidian aspects, specking into more stability on my weapons, really preparing myself for some of these shifts we're going to see next season. Like I said, massive list in the TWAB here. Go and read over it yourself. The big controversial take is that Stompies actually get a negative 50 air effectiveness modifier in the air, but you can spec into it. You'll be able to run Adept Icarus. You can negate it as much as you can. And like I said, this only affects aim assist while you're in the air. If you're hitting your shots, if you're on point with your accuracy, you're still gonna land your shot. It's just not gonna have that bullet magnetism as much when you're airborne. So it's not as crazy as people might think. They're not nerfing jumping, as people like to say, but there are some negative effects if you are using the stompies, unfortunately. So these are some massive sweeping changes coming next season. There's so much more to go over in this TWAB, but these are three things that you can really think about right now to prepare yourself for these meta shifts coming in season 17. You wanna go after resilience, higher stability on your weapons, and take a look at that list of exotics there in the TWAB. I'll leave a link to the article down below so that you can see how your preferred exotic is being affected come next season. If you guys enjoy the video, do me a favor, leave a like down below, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next one.